by six. You alluded to it though, Pat. They'll be without one of their starters, Logan McKee tonight, and uh, how they adjust with a new starting lineup. You just never know as a coach which team is going to show up. Absolutely. And, you know, size-wise, they match right up with Princeton. But it's the quickness that's going to be the big difference in this game. It's going to be very interesting to see how Stillman Valley is going to want to slow it down, use the time, use a lot of possessions, where you know Princeton's going to want to run, 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 and trap. Our keys to tonight's ballgame are brought to us by First State Bank. Locally owned, committed to exceptional service and banking products like Kasasa checking and on-the-go mobile banking. The winning team at First State Bank is your key to unlocking great banking services. Member FDIC. As far as the game last night, uh, Stillman Valley had two players in double figures. They're led by their big guy, Alex Rahm, the 6'7 senior at 20. The only other player in double figures was Owen Dunseth, a 6'4 kind of guard forward type who ended up with 11. But uh, not a lot of points. They average only 54 a ball game. Uh, while Princeton averages 68 per contest and gives up only 45 right now for Princeton. So their defense has really started to catch up with their offense. Absolutely. And but, that's going to be one of the keys to see how far they go in this tournament run. Well, I have a feeling that Princeton will probably come out and run that 1-3-1 uh, that one, one trap. And they like to trap you right near midcourt. Absolutely. And see if they can get steals. They'll gamble a little bit trying to get the ball out and go the other way. I would say conservatively, Princeton probably had eight stuffs in the ball game last night. They had one point in time where they had three breakouts and three slams by three different players in a row. The biggest thing is going to be also to see how Stillman Valley's guards handle the pressure. You know, if they can get through that first and second pass, then they're going to be okay. But that's what killed it with Halls. They couldn't get through that first and second pass last night. Stillman Valley is was tied for sixth in the Big Northern Conference, conference that was dominated by the two Rockford schools, Rockford Lutheran and Rockford Christian, who ended up 9-0 and 8-1 and in conference play. Byron was 6-3, and three, as were the Dixon Dukes. Winnebago was 5-4, four, and four, and Rock Falls and Stillman Valley 4-5 and five in conference play. Overall, Stillman Valley 19-11 and 11 on the season, and uh, that, was a, that was a big tough conference this past mm -hmm. season. Big Northern had a lot of good teams. We're going to take one more break. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups, the national anthem, and more for you here from Bureau Valley High School. It's Princeton and Stillman Valley in a regional championship ball game in Class 2A after this on 103.9 WLPO. is and you know we look at the winner moves on to Orion and they say Orion's gym is about half the size of this so it's going to be very interesting hopefully Princeton moves on it'll be interesting to see what the crowd's like over there but we're going to get by this one first we're going to have a national anthem coming up here momentarily then we'll have the introduction of the starting lineup so we'll be ready to go here they're very prompt usually right on the clock the ball will go in the air right at 7 o'clock here tonight as we are now the PA announcer the warns us of the national anthem.
National Anthem from Bureau Valley High School. Starting lineups coming up next. First for the visitors on the scoreboard from Stillman Valley. Brett Pierce will be one of the starters at guard, 6'2 and a senior. He'll be joined by Caleb Johnson, a 6'1 senior in the backcourt as well. Owen Dunseth, a guard forward type at 6'4 and a senior. Had 11 points in the ball game against Kiwani last night. Philip Broski, a 6'3 senior. And uh, their big guy, senior Alex Ron, 6'7 and a senior, and had 20 in the ball game against Kiwani last night. Senior As we said, the Cardinals come in with a record of 19 and 11. For the Princeton Tigers, wearing their home white uniforms trimmed in blue, they'll go this way. Tegan Davis will be one of the starters tonight at 6'2. He averages 16 a ball game. Coming off a huge effort last night of 31 in three quarters of play. He didn't play at all in the fourth quarter. He had just 16. He also had just six rebounds and three and a half assists on the season. Court Lawson is the point guard. He's a junior at 6'3", and he adds averages about five and a half assists per contest. Brady Thompson, the all-time leading scorer in Princeton basketball in history, averages 23 a ball game. He's a 6'4 senior. He also averages 6.7 rebounds per contest. Noah Laporte, the sophomore at 6'3", is a starter tonight, averaging 10 a game and 5.5 and rebounds per contest. And also Colton Monroe, he's 6'6 and a senior, averaging 8 a game and also 2.5 assists per ball game for Coach Jason Smith and the Tigers will come in with a record of 29 and two. We're in first or second place most of the season in the class 2A polls. Ended up in fourth after getting a late loss. But since then, everything started to roll again for the Tigers. Laporte will be in there to jump center and he'll go against Owen Dunseth and to nobody's surprise, Princeton gets the opening tap here. The big 6'7 kid stayed underneath the basket and he can go for the jump ball. <laughs> yep. Here's Davis outside the arc on the right side. Now they give it back over to Lawson. It's a little boxing one here on Davis they're doing it on. Interesting, here's Laporte right down the middle of the court. Banks it in from about seven feet away in the heart of the paint and it's an early 2-0 Princeton lead. Straight man-to-man -man yep. Princeton. A little surprising, I thought they might go to the trap right off the bat. They'll probably start that second quarter. They change it up usually. Now the dump pass goes down low. Ron couldn't get the shot away. The ball nearly stolen away. It is stolen away by Tegan Davis. Bust out. Here comes Monroe. Misses the slam. But Thompson gets the rebound and he's fouled. Monroe was just off stride and probably should have just taken his time and laid it in. He was off stride, but I think he also traveled. So I think he did. He was going so fast, I don't think the officials were, close, were right up on the play. So a common foul inbound play. Laporte takes it up shot, no. Gets his own rebound, puts it back up again, no. Gets his third try and he makes it. So it's all been the sophomore Laporte so far. 4-0 Princeton. It's going to be a long night for Stillman Valley if they're going to go that way. Let uh, Princeton get 3-4 shots. Now an over and back call, call against the Cardinals. Another turnover, two early ones against Stillman Valley. And Princeton looks like they're ready to play. They really are. Monroe will inbound near midcourt. Now it's a triangle and two here. They're going to guard Thompson and guard Davis. They're going to play the triangle for the other three players for Stillman Valley. Interesting. Trying some different gimmicks. Yep. With Monroe outside, gets it to Laporte near the free throw line, gives it up down low. The, the, the ball flipped to the other side by Lawson. Three ball by Monroe, no good. Laporte, another rebound. Takes it right back up and powers it in. He's got all six of the Princeton points. Looks like he changed it, uh, jerseys with Tegan Davis. Well, last night you said it was all Davis, now it's yep. the fourth time. Yep, exactly right. That's the that's the crazy thing about Princeton. They have so many weapons. Yeah, it's a major, major problem defensively if you're Stillman Valley. And Princeton, with their size, is still very quick. Pick the ball into the paint. Shot, a runner, no. The foul is going to be called against the Tigers here. They call it on Tegan Davis. That's the first foul of the ball game at the 6.05 mark here in the first quarter. 6-0 Tigers. 
to the free throw line goes Owen Dunseth, the 6'4 senior for Stillman Valley. His free throw is in the air and very good. So it took nearly two minutes for Stillman Valley to get on the board. They do so with the free throw here. One more coming for Dunseth. Takes his time at the line. Second toss is in the air. Hard off the back of the iron, but Stillman gets the rebound. Putting it back up. Shot is a wild one. And here comes Princeton in transition. Here's the drive to the hoop, and it's Court Lawson who pulls from about six or seven feet away on the right side, and it's 8-1 Princeton. Great out there by Lawson, taking it all the way down. They dump it down low to Ron. He fades away. Shot no good. Monroe the rebound for Princeton. Stillman Valley's getting one shot, and that's it. In transition, nearly threw it away, but Davis tra tracks it down. Bring it cross court to Monroe. Dump it to Laporte. He's double teamed. P pass down low. Davis muscles it up and in. Hung on the front of the rim and then nestled its way back down. It's 10-1 Princeton. I'm a little surprised that Stillman hasn't taken a timeout here yet, Pat. Yeah, I think they will right after this possession. Trying to settle things down. They've got their big guy, Alex Rahm, way outside right now. Now he rolls down the lane. He's, he's being guarded by Thompson. They pass him off to Laporte. Thompson doesn't match up real well physically against the big guy, Rahm, who's very muscular at 6'7". Ball still on the outside. Here's Pierce, the guy who doesn't start normally, but they get one to go down. Finally, the first basket for Stillman Valley on the hoop. That time was built. Brett Pierce, the guy who was the starter tonight in place of the normal starter who was ejected last night. Monroe's got to look to shoot the ball. I mean, he's at three-point wide open. I mean, they're going to leave him open. Yep, they are. He's got the ball now at the top of the circle. He needs to either dribble in because they're doing a triangle in two or shoot yep. the ball. Here, Thompson way out front. 10-3 Princeton as we near the four-minute mark for the game's first quarter. And a five count against Thompson. I don't think he realized the count was on. Looks like there was some separation, at least once in there, Pat. I mean, too much dribbling, I mean, with yeah. two, especially at triangle two. Yeah. They just got to pass the ball. There's people wide open. But that's their, only their first turnover. So Stillman gets the basketball here. Get it over to Broski. Down below, picking it up and laying it down. That was Pierce. That was Pierce again. He's got he, four points. He's got four of the five for Stillman Valley. He's got both of their baskets. And it's 10-5 in favor of Princeton. Here's Laporte, free throw line area. And he gets the return pass, goes right to the hole. As he goes up, he's fouled. I think that was on Rahm. Yeah, it's the, yep. It's his first team two. So Laporte to the free throw line here to shoot a pair. Not a great free throw shooter on the season. Shoots right at 56% on the season. But he'll get a pair here. That's the first foul on John Ron, or Alex Ron, rather. Free throw, nestles his way over the front of the rim and down. He's got seven points early. And he, I believe he only had nine in the ball game last night. Second toss is no good by Laporte, but he gets his own rebound, just tipped right back out to him, picks it inside, up the glass and in, count it, he's fouled. He's got nine points, he has a chance for, what, a four-point play. Too big, too strong, too quick right now for Stillman Valley. And, and their big guy, Ron, just picked up his second foul on top of it. That's not good. Especially when you know they're shorthanded. Yeah, they're going to go to their bench right here. Free throw by Laporte. Too long. Rebound. Fought for on the floor. Still on the floor. Still rolling near the sideline. And finally Stillman Valley comes up with it. Ahead off the glass is a wild shot taken that time by Philip Broski. And as Laporte tried to go inside, he's hacked on the arm and they'll go to the free throw line. As you hear, the Stillman Valley fans are not happy with the referees. And they're also right around us here. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was a pretty solid call. Looked like he got him across the arm. They called that personal foul, by the way, on Dunseth. And well, Laporte misses another free throw. Here. He's one for four from the free throw line. As we said, he's not a great free throw shooter. Into the lineup for the first time, Jacob Rhodes, a 6'4 junior, replacing Ron for Stillman Valley. 
The port second toss is a line drive effort. No. Rebound fought for. Davis muscles it up and in. You think he did something good if you're Stillman, you get him to miss a couple of free throws, and Princeton goes to the offensive glass. Last two misses they've had offensive boards. So Princeton with plenty of defensive pressure on them, and now you're going to have a hold call on Monroe out front. That's not a good matchup for him out there on the floor. Monroe would be better guarding inside, yeah, but Laporte is guarding the guy inside. So First foul on Colton Monroe is the second against Princeton. 3.04, the clock stopped here in the first quarter. 15-5, Tigers. Inbound play coming here. Nearly stolen away. Laporte just barely missed the pick right there. Stillman Valley give up their dribble out front. Out to the outside, that's Broski. The shot no good. Rebound, tipped around and picked back up by Stillman. Three balls, an air ball. And it's goes tipped out of bounds. It goes off of Stillman Valley and back to Princeton here. Normal substitution, Christian Rosario comes in to replace Monroe for Princeton as they go smaller and quicker right now. Stillman Valley still staying in the triangle in two. They're chasing Thompson and chasing Davis. Well, they've done a good job on Thompson so far, but here's Rosario. Can take a three anytime he wants it. He does. Misses the shot. Rebound tipped around and finally controlled by Broski. There's a little push in the back there, but they didn't see it. Yep. The fresh officials were already running back up the floor. But the couple hundred Stillman Valley fans saw it. Yep. <laughs> they all have their black and white shirts on, <laughs> apparently, tonight. Off the high screen is Rahman, who just came into the ball game. And the ball knocked out of bounds by Christian Rosario for Princeton. It goes back to the Cardinals here. 2.09 for the first quarter, 15 to 5, Princeton. Now the ball nearly stolen by Davis, but he ran out of real estate on the sideline. It goes out of bounds, back to Stillman Valley. Davis does a great job of anticipating the pass. Broski will do the honors for Stillman Valley. Get it inbounds here, he takes the return pass. Outside the arc, picked up by Rosario. Down low, had no place to go. Skip pass comes across on the baseline. Back to Broski, open for three, shot, rimming no. Rebound taken down that time by Lawson for Princeton. Gets it down low, muscles shot up, no by Davis. Loose on the floor, Lawson takes it, lays it in. Port Lawson with a look what I found, rebound, puts it back up and in, and it's 17-5 in favor of Princeton here in the first with a minute and a half to go in it. On the baseline, here's Pierce, who scored early and then throws the ball out of bounds. He bounced it, trying to go cross yep. court, and it hit the, the baseline. Phillips and Monroe back in, replacing Laporte and Lawson for Princeton. They'll have the ball length of the court away from their attacking hoop, leading it by a dozen here. With the ball is Phillips for Princeton. Get it to the outside to Rosario. Looking for some help. Skip pass comes across. Phillips open for three. Barely scrapes the rim. But Monroe on the other side picks it back up and in. Weak side rebound by Colton Monroe. Muscles it back up and in. Found it and he's fouled. That's his first two of the night. Every time the Prince gets ball in the paint, they convert and get fouled. Dunseth picks up the personal foul for Stillman Valley. His first is the That's his second. fifth. Oh, excuse me, his second. That's the fifth already against Stillman Valley. Monroe's free throw literally pops in and out. Thompson almost got the rebound, but instead here's Broski with it. He just got away with the travel yep. right there. It was so quick that I don't think the official saw it. And there's an offensive foul. That's an obvious one. As Kale Rauman just laid a forearm right into the chest of Rosario. Rosario, who leads the Princeton team in charges taken on the season, picks up another one right there. So under right. a minute to go here in the first quarter. Right now, Stillman Valley is really out of sync. Well, Very important. Princeton will do that to you. Yep, Princeton just put, could put the hammer down right here. There's Rosario, takes one dribble, gives it to Thompson. Swing it to Phillips. They'll let him take that shot, I think. And they've got a double Both foul up. called against Thompson and I think the other, the other one might be Dunseth. No, it's oh, Rauman and uh, 
Robin. Rosario. Anna and Rosario is first, you're right. And Rosario, that's his first. So then it goes to the possession arrow, and uh, the possession goes to uh, Princeton here. I think it actually stays possession. It used to be it would be, it would be a, uh, called a what, what then was a held ball. Because I think they're giving it to Princeton over there, and that's where they stopped it. Okay. That's it. You're right, Pat. That's why we keep you around. <laughs> You, sp you spend half your day reading the rule book so you can critique officials. <laughs> I did that for a lot of years. <laughs> now they don't make mistakes It's anymore, funny, whenever I go to a gym and see a referee, they all know me. And I don't know if it's a good way. <laughs> <laughs> Lawson will trigger near the far sideline for Princeton. They're up 14 with 40.8 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Thompson thought about a three, didn't pull the trigger. Now dribbles into a double team. Phillips open, leaves the shot short. Rebound tipped back outside to Monroe. Gives up his dribble. Down low, Lawson muscles it up and in. He's got six points early on. By bringing Monroe out in this ball game, Pat, I think it's really opened up the rebounding underneath. Absolutely. For Princeton. Now a wild shot for three, no good. Monroe the rebound. Gets it ahead to Davis. To Thompson on the bust out. No, he's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line to shoot a pair here with 10.6 seconds remaining in the first quarter. I'm not sure we've gone up and down yet without fouls called. There's been, There's a been no flow. That's already 11 fouls here in the first quarter. Unfortunately for Stillman Valley, they've got eight of them. It's his third foul. So Thompson to the free throw line. He's the best shooter from the free throw line on the season for Princeton. And he, of course, misses as soon as I said that. James, James Starkey, who has been instant offense when he's come in for Princeton almost every game we've seen comes in to give Keegan Davis a little extra blow with 10.6 seconds remaining here in the quarter 21 to 5 Princeton Thompson's second free throw is perfect that's his first score of the night 17 point Princeton lead they put a little pressure on in the backcourt Stillman beats it the other way long three ball no good rebound put back no at the horn That was uh, Rhodes who tried to put it back up and in and looked like he got bumped pretty good, but no call right there. Played through the first eight minutes of this one. It's been all Princeton again, 22-5. Tigers, we're back after this. By the way, the opening tip in tonight's ball game is brought to us by Bill Walsh Automotive Group. Here's a tip for you. If you're in the market for a new car or truck, the only place you need to visit is Bill, BillWalsh.com where you're sure to score a winning deal. Stillman Valley with the basketball to start the second period. Going inside to try to take the shot was Broski and his ball was swatted out of bounds by Noah Laporte, who who's the leads the team in block shots, believe it or not. And he's only a sophomore. Inbound play here for Stillman. A little shot behind a screen, knocking it down for two. That's Owen Dunseth. He's got three points, three of the seven. Princeton sees their lead shrink to 15. Skip pass comes across. They get it to Lawson. He loses his man underneath. Whips a pass out front. Monroe wide open for three. 
leaves it too long. Long rebound comes to Pierce. They will leave him open. That's why they're in that triangle in two. Now the ball loose on the floor, held ball, and I think it's going to go back over to Princeton. Yep. Two ball, possession arrow favoring Princeton. Stillman Valley coach was running up and down the sideline wanting a timeout there to save the possession. Well, it was too late. They're also not going to grant it to you when the ball's rolling around on the floor. Absolutely. Which was exactly the case right there. You know, they got eight fouls already, Stillman Valley, so yep. it's bonus, possibly double bonus coming up soon. Yep. Which for Princeton has not been a necessarily a no. blessing. They haven't shot free throws as well. And now a travel call. Wow. Does it look like a tie up right there it, Ron, did. it definitely looked like a Ron had the ball and Laporte stuck a hand in there to tie him up and then Ron went down they called it travel I thought if anything it was a jump ball yeah I did too off the inbound play here's Thompson with it way outside been held to just one point so far he's only taken I think one shot yeah we haven't mentioned Tam Thompson's name except like one time yeah he took it to the hole but they've done a pretty good job of defending him. Here's Monroe. Skip pass comes to Lawson, who then just resets the offense for Princeton as he brings it back to the top of the circle. But this is what I don't understand. You look at Thompson. Go set some screens for him. Get him open. Yep. Most coaches, it's hard for them to adjust against a triangle and two. What Princeton's trying to do right now, though, it looks like he wants Stillman to come out and match up with them. Why? You're up 22-7. to seven. Keep it going. Well, they also feel like if they come out there that they're not going to be able to guard him. Well, I think it would be right here with Monroe. You see him standing there, right? Free throw extended. Go down, set the screen for exactly. Thompson. Or go get Davis open. Exactly. This here looks like, to me, that Prince is afraid. No, you're up 22-7. Yeah. You got to lose. Well, yeah, this is actually probably helping Stillman. Stillman Valley, they're in foul trouble. Yeah. They got one of their better players are out. I mean, I know they're not going to win with seven points, but... This will be the last year you'll probably be able to do this in, in high school basketball as it's likely you'll see a 35-second shot clock next season. If you're the number five team in the state, you're not, you don't fear anybody no. going after them. Well, they haven't given them a reason to fear them so far either, Pat. All right. You're shortening the game, allowing them to kind of stay sort of within striking distance. And what do we Anything say? can happen. And what did we say earlier on? Stillman Valley wants the game short, and they want long possessions. Exactly. And they're getting one right here. We're down to 525 for the first half. And Princeton hasn't scored this quarter. I was going to say, we might go to a scoreboard update. <laughs> <laughs> we might do that if they keep this up. Here's Lawson way outside the arc. Skip pass comes to Monroe. Thought about a three, didn't pull the trigger. Now a reach-in foul is going to be called against Stillman Valley. Right here, as they called the personal Stewart on Drake Stewart. So this is a one and one opportunity for Thompson here, who has scored just one point on a free throw earlier on. It's one out of two from the 15-foot stripe so far. 5.07, clock stop here for the first half. Thompson's free throw is good. To get one more here. A couple scoreboard updates real quick. Serena 16, Putnam County 14 at the end of one. Midland 16, St. Pete 14 at the end of one. And at the end of one, it's Bishop McNamara 17, Seneca 11. Scoreboard updates all season long brought to us by SITK Kitchen and Bath. Free throw by Thompson rolls in, and it's 24-7. Now, and now here comes the pressure. Yeah, full court press. They want to speed Stillman Valley up if they can. They break the pressure, though, in the backcourt. And the ball loose on the floor for a moment. Ron picks it up, takes it in, lays it in. It's his first two of the night. Wasn't pretty, but they got the job done that time. The Stillman Valley attack. Here's Monroe outside the arc and right side. Brings it back to Lawson. Straight away as they come out to match up against him. He got bumped out front. Flips it back to Laporte in traffic. Muscles it up, no. Rebound fought for. Picked up and then stolen away, but stolen right back by Davis. Can't get it to go. Rebound by Thompson. He has the ball raked out of him. And they call it a held ball, and it's going to go back to Stillman Valley. This is getting rough out here right now, Pat. <laughs> I don't know. We can't tell what they're going to call up here, let alone down there. Yep, it's, it's crazy. A, it's a guess. So Princeton puts the pressure right back on here. But immediately get it up over the timeline easily. Here's Pierce. Good pass and transition. Missing the shot inside, though, was Ron. And it goes off his hands and out of bounds. 
both fan bases, I don't think are real happy with the referees. No, right I don't there. think so. For the first time, Jordan Reinhardt, a sophomore off the Princeton bench, replacing Monroe. I think what they want to do is bring in another shooter and the sophomore Reinhardt, we've seen him play right. at the sophomore level, is a good three-point shooter. Right now, they got to look for somebody to shoot. But like I said, go set some screens, get Thompson or Davis open. Reinhardt outside the arc on the right side. Now gives up his dribble, looks for help. Gets it to Laporte, back to Reinhardt. He's wide open. He buries a three from the right baseline. So Reinhardt comes in and pays immediate dividends. Now the ball's stolen away. On the runway, here's Davis with a two-handed slam. The momentum is turned big time. Two-handed rim wrecker right there by Tegan Davis. And ball nearly stolen. In fact, it is, it is stolen. stolen away. Laporte comes up with it ahead to Thompson. This is one to beat. the best. Shot no, but he's fouled as he goes in. And he'll shoot two. 29 to nine, the score. And if Stillman Valley is on the verge of losing contact right now. Stewart picked up the foul for Stillman. That's his second. 10 team fouls already against Stillman Valley. Princeton has only three. Thompson will shoot a pair here. Three for four from the line. Has three points on the night. Three first toss is good. We'll get one more here. 30 to nine, Tigers. Don't be surprised to see Stillman Valley coach get a technical. He's really working the yeah, he is. right now. They're letting him get away with some stuff yep. right now. And that will wear, wear down after a while. Both free throws by Thompson are good. He has five now in the lead out to 22 for Princeton with 325 remaining in the first half. On the baseline, here's Pierce. Shuffles one up there as a wild shot. Rebound taken away by Thompson for Princeton. Davis says, I'll take it right to the rack. Or let it that was go. Lawson. That's going to be Lawson. It was four, not two. Yeah, they didn't even know where he was. Nope. They had their backs turned to him. He's not one of their areas of emphasis defensively, and Lawson has had a good first half. He has eight points already. The ball nearly stolen away. Thompson dives on the floor after it, and I think they're going to call a foul against... I think they are calling a foul. ...against Stillman Valley, and Thompson's going to go back to the other yep. end to shoot two on the double bonus. They, do they dove right on top of Thompson after he already had the ball. That's his second, team 10. Broski double got bonus. the foul, that's his second. And as we said, two shots opportunity here for Thompson, wrong guy to foul. Has five points and they're all from the free throw line. Free throw is good. 34 to nine, Princeton still Almost three minutes to go here in the first half. He's six for seven from the free throw line. Seven for eight. 35 to nine. The Stillman Valley has no answer offensively at all in this game. They're just so quick, Princeton. Now a shot just flipped up there that time by Rams, uh, 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 Raman. And uh, here's Reinhardt going the other way with it, and he lays it in. He, he has five, five off the bench. Wow. Everybody's scoring for Princeton. They've got a good balance so far. Taking it inside and finally getting a bit of an answer that time. That was 13 now. Dunseth, now Princeton throws it away. Here's Pierce back the other way with it. Shot for three. Pops in and out and back in again. Give that hoop to Philip Broski. A little 5-0 run here by, by Stillman Valley. Yet they still oh, throw not yet. Yeah, never mind about that. Reinhardt's got eight points off the bench. He is a very skilled offensive player. We've saw, seen that. And a normal team, he would have been up on the varsity a long time ago. But they have so much talent, they let him stay down and play on the sophomore level. Now a three ball is an air ball. And here comes Laporte back the other way with it. Gets tackled. Offensive just, foul. Oh my goodness. I don't know how that's an offensive foul. Well, the, the <laughs> defender fell down and was still reaching trying to get at Laporte. Wow. For the first time, Bennett Williams 
a 6'4 junior into the lineup. 6'4, 265, very athletic. One of the linemen on the football team. Rosario also back in for Princeton. Caleb Johnson in for the Cardinals right now. 40 to 14 Princeton. Minute and a half to go in the first half. And down low, Williams gets called for the bump as he tried to reach around and get in front of Ron. Only the fifth team foul is his first. So this is a common foul off the inbound play. Here's Johnson with it. And I'm not sure what the call was. It was a block on Rosario. Wow. But it was awful late because it's the just, offensive player was rolling on the floor. I'm not saying either team's benefiting by this, but the whistle blows and it's like, well, I'm not sure what the call is. And exactly. I, and I don't, sometimes I don't think the guys in black and white know either. Up the inbound, Davis gets a hand on it. It goes out of bounds. Back to Stillman Valley. A minute 23 until half. 26-point Princeton lead. They get it inbounds to Broski. Rosario down low. That time he did get him. That's Rosario's third if it's on him. And he hasn't really played that much. No. It is his, his third. third. Rosario's third, team seven. Now Coach Smith not very happy. He's up working the officials. Monroe off the bench will come in after the first free throw, which is good by Broski. So Rosario with the three fouls goes to the bench. Minute 18 showing on the first half clock. There's been 17 fouls called. I think actually 18 fouls called in the first half. Second free throw no good. Rebound taken down by Williams for Princeton. Ahead they bring it. Here's Reinhardt loses his man. Skip pass comes across. Laying it in as Monroe gives the assist to Jordan Reinhardt. He's got four points on the night Monroe. He came right to the hoop though and Reinhardt found him immediately. 42-15 Princeton. Been a very physical ball game it throughout. Is. Caleb Johnson with it, gives up his dribble. Now nearly tosses it away. Behind his back is Broski, and the ball stolen away by Davis. He and Thompson, then he, the ball's thrown away. Back the other way, three ball, very long. Williams the rebound. Ahead to Thompson, loses it for a moment, picks it up, he's hammered. It's almost ground. intentional foul, like they grabbed him. Didn't look like he went for the ball at all. No. The guys in black and white are very slowly losing control of the game. They call that personal foul on Jacob Rhodes, his first. I think that's about 12 fouls as a team. It is. And Thompson will go right back to the free throw line. He's got seven points, and they have all come from the 15-foot stripe. And he nails another one. He's got eight. Eight for nine from the free throw line. So Ron, with the two fouls, comes right back in. So right now, Stillman Valley has three players on the four players on the floor with two fouls apiece. Second toss by Thompson rolls in again, and it's 44 to 15. Wow. Thompson with nine points on free throws. Now taking it up, shot. Wild one by Johnson. Rebound taken down by Reinhardt for Princeton. Get it to Monroe, to Thompson. Eight seconds to go in the half. He's way out front. Beats a man, beats another ball stolen away. Long shot down range by Pierce. Hits the rim and misses. And that'll do it for the first half. 44-15, Princeton has had things all their own way here so far in half number one. We'll be back with a look at a scoreboard update. We'll also have Pat's first half numbers and uh, maybe a heat check or two as far as that is concerned as well for our sponsors. 44 for Princeton, 15 Stillman Valley. We're back after this.
Services and Caregiver Services, locally owned in-home health care connection, and IHCC Hospice is here for you. Find out more at IHCC.care. And heat checks when you're as hot as Princeton has been in the first half are courtesy of Town & Country Services. Whether you're too hot or too cold, remember, Town & Country Services is doing whatever it takes. We're going to get another break in. We come back. Our halftime activities will continue here on 103.9 WLPO with Princeton with a big halftime lead. To note. Time for a scoreboard update brought to us by our friends at SITK Kitchen and Bath. Make this the year that you update the inside of your home. Sit down with the SITK design team and imagine together. Found out, find out more at somekitchen.com. Pat? These are all halftime scores. Serena 29, Putnam County 23, Midland 30, St. Pete 28, Bishop McNamara 34, Seneca 19. Ottawa, excuse me, Sterling 41, Ottawa 29, and then Rockridge 16, Sherrard 11, and that's a halftime score. score. As we said, scoreboard updates all season long brought to us by SITK Kitchen and Bath. We're looking one more break. When we come back, Pat, we'll have a look at the first half numbers dominated by Princeton as they lead it big here at halftime. Still got to get in one more break. This is 90 seconds. And then another 90 seconds. 90 to 90, so we got three minutes at five. So do it quick. Uh, 99. Now you get you can take like two minutes if you want. A minute and a half, whatever. Okay, what do I got for 44?
back at Bureau Valley High School. Here's a look at the first half numbers with Pat. Stillman Valley was five for 14 from twos, one for nine from threes. They were two for four from the free throw line with nine turnovers. Princeton, on the other hand, was 14 for 20 from twos, two for seven from threes, nine for 15 from the free throw line, and five turnovers. But the only thing that Princeton had problems with was Noah Laporte shooting free throws in the first half. Yeah. Other than that, it was full speed ahead for the Tigers in half number one as they lead it here. 44 to 15 at halftime. They led it 22 to 5 at the end of the first quarter. We owe you one more break. We come back. Be ready for second half action. Back here in Bureau Valley where Princeton leads it over Stillman Valley. 44-15 here at the halftime stop. With the accelerator down and away you go, huh? They absolutely did. The only thing I would question would be why hold the ball for a minute and a half, but every coach has their different opinions. I'm just saying if I was yep. number five, I wouldn't be holding the ball. I'd be going right at him and put him away. I mean, you're up 45 or 44, 15. Yep. I took it to him, which they have been. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So a 29-point lead here at, ha at the halftime break for Princeton. We'll remind you that if Princeton is up by 30 points any time during the final quarter, that they'd go to a running clock. Right. So we'll have to see how that plays out here in the later going. Stillman Valley says, not so fast. We're going to give it our best shot to make this a basketball game. Princeton gets the ball to start the second half. Monroe will trigger near half court. He gets it into the backcourt to Lawson, who walks it up into the front court. Looks like they're straight man to man right now. Lawson dumps it to Laporte, who fumbles it. It's almost like double it. dribble. He got away with a double dribble and then lost it anyway. Get it to Pierce. Back the other way with it is Johnson into the paint. Shot, rims no. Rebound ripped down by Noah Laporte for Princeton. He'll bring it ahead himself. Gets it to Court Lawson, who steps up to the free throw line area. And they're still in that triangle, too. Yep, and a little fadeaway jumper from 12, no good, by Lawson. Had a good look at it right there. He did. Actually had a better shot early. Now the three ball is drained on the far side, and knocking that one down, that's uh, Pierce. Pierce. He's got, he's got seven points on the night. Brett Pierce, who normally wouldn't be starting in the ball game, but because... They lost one of their starters due to he being ejected in the last game. Pierce drew the start, and he's responding pretty well. Monroe's got to be looking for offense right there. He's yep. standing. Here's Lawson with it. 
Good pass inside to Laporte. Back to Lawson who lays it in. Great offense right there. Nice two-man game right there as they got it to Laporte near the free throw line area and he immediately dumped it right back to Lawson who got the layup. Great things have happened when they get the ball to, to the elbow area with Lawson. Absolutely. Or with uh, Laporte. Lawson, by the way, with 10. He's in double figures leading the Princeton scoring attack, which is pretty well balanced tonight. Now the ball nearly stolen away. Stillman Valley holds on to it. They're down by 28 right now. There's a wild shot taken by Dunseth, but he's bailed out on a foul against the Tigers. Yeah, there's no sense falling there. He's fallen away and has no reason to be shooting the ball like that. Davis gets his second personal foul, the first foul of the second half against Princeton. And Dunseth back to the free throw line here to shoot a pair. His first one a little hard off the back of the iron. He'll get one more here. He's one for three from the free throw line. Has five points so far. Second toss by Dunseth is also hard. Rebound chased down by Davis for Princeton. Ahead to, T to Lawson. Get it to Monroe. Bounce pass comes down low, but Davis is immediately double teamed. Back to Monroe. Repost and the ball's thrown away by Monroe. They saw that one coming a mile away. Absolutely. Now the ball nearly lost. Shot rejected on the inside. Here comes Princeton on the bust out. Thompson takes it up. He shot partially blocked. That might have been like Thompson's second attempt tonight. Yep, not many. Now the shot at the other end, immediate response by Stillman Valley, and taking that up was Dunseth, and a timeout taken by Princeton here. 5.34 remaining here in the third quarter. The Princeton lead cut to 26. We'll take a timeout period as well. Princeton, 46. Stillman Valley, 20. We're back after this. that uh, if Princeton comes out on top this evening, they'll be back in action on Tuesday night over at the Orion sectional. That's a single game that night Seven over at Orion. tip, I believe. Yep. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on. They'd be playing, as we said, the 7 o'clock game on Wednesday. First things first, here's Lawson dribbles up to the defense. Now back to Monroe, back to Lawson again. Stillman really packing it in deep. Well, there they're leaving Monroe wide open in Lawson. And, and, and those two guys got to get they're, moving. They're not going to take those shots. Or they, set screens. Well, they, they need to just ch change, you know, change positions. Right. If, if Monroe's not going to shoot out there, put them down in the block, put somebody else outside. Princeton's not having, they're not doing a really good job finish, no, they're not. figuring out this triangle in two right now. No, they are not. Just a little catch here between Lawson and Monroe, but they're not looking to the basket. No. Nope. They're going east and west instead of north and south. And again, that helps Stillman Valley. Right. Here's Laporte has the ball tipped away from behind. On the bust out the other way. That was a goaltend. The shot was blocked, and it was a goaltend by Laporte. They didn't see it. But a loose ball foul is going to go against Princeton here. I think they may even call it a shooting foul. They did. That's his second, second against Princeton this half. 4.38 to go in the third. And I believe that's Dunseth back at the line here. His free throw is good. He's got eight. One more coming here. Did you see that goaltend though? I mean, it was, it, it was pretty obvious. It should have been a, been a two pointer there. Second toss by Dunseth, also good. And the lead down to 24. It was 20, what, 29 at halftime? It was a 44-15. Yep. So it's a 7-2 run here by Stillman Valley. And right now, they're not even look, 
happy to score if they're going to keep on playing catcher with Lawson and Monroe. And I look at the, the statistics for Stillman Valley and studying early. A lot of pushing going on at the elbow area there. The corner's just getting killed down low. Somebody's got to blow a whistle there. I mean, they're banging each other big time. Well, the ball tipped out of bounds and will go back to Princeton here. Coach Smith is just wondering what, what he's got to do to get a foul call. Right. It's either an intentional, or it's going to be a foul on both of them, or, you know, somebody's got to get called. Yep. They're still banging each other. They are. But again, nobody's calling anything, so until they do, that's what's going to happen. There's Monroe with it outside the arc right side. Now gives it back up to Lawson. Neither team very happy right now as far as the officiating is concerned in this game. Princeton just continues to play perimeter catch. If I'm still in Valley, I'm, I'm pretty happy about well, I'm this. I'm staying back, you know. Princeton fans are irate. And I'm not sure what the pass is. He's got Laporte. Gully's got. Wow. Second foul on Laporte. Also results in a turnover for Princeton. Well, they're getting inside Laporte's head right there. Just yep. No, number one, go move, just don't stand there. Exactly. Go down, come back up, something, or have somebody set a screen. Princeton right now is standing on offense. Yep, they're doing nothing. So there's Johnson with it outside the Broski for Stillman Valley on the left-handed dribble near the top of the circle. Now backs away. 3-10 for the third. Back down low. Shot rejected on the inside. And I think it's going to be another foul on Laporte. That would be his third. I would probably be looking to take him out right now. Yeah, pull yeah, him down you're right. They're going to get him out of the game, bring Reinhardt back in. You have to remember Noah Laporte's still a sophomore. Right. He's got some learning to do. Free throw by Dunseth. Swerves in. Number 42, Reinhardt checking in for the Tigers. One more free throw coming here for Owen Dunseth, the 6'4 senior. I don't blame Laporte as much as they got to tell him to do some stuff and just sit, instead of standing there. Well, move down, come up, go set a ball screen, something. Second toss is also good. And a timeout taken by Stillman Valley right here. Run a 9-2 run here in Stillman Valley to start the third. One scoreboard update. The end of the three quarters, it's Serena 41, Putnam County 30. So Serena, who's an awfully good ball club, starting to pull away from the Panthers right now. Yeah, and the winner of that goes to Putnam County sectional. And our, our scoreboard updates all season long brought to us by SITK Kitchen and Bath. A couple more scoreboard updates at halftime. It's Midland 30, St. V 28, Bishop McNamara 34, Seneca 19. Another halftime, Sterling 41, Ottawa 29, and then Rock Ridge 16 and Sherrard 11. Coach Smith kind of trying to calm his team down, I think, a little bit right now on the bench. Ex absolutely. I believe Stillman Valley's getting in a couple of their heads right now, and they yep. just need to calm down, relax. So the lead down to 22. For Princeton, they led it by 29 at halftime. The only problem is to our right, there's a couple video cameras. I'm not sure who they all are, but I'm sure the other teams in the section all here scout them. Yep, absolutely. Now they put Monroe on the top there. There's Reinhardt with it for the Tigers. They have to come out and respect him, though. Ball goes inside to Monroe, but he has it poked away. Picked up by Johnson for Stillman Valley. In transition, takes it in. Offensive foul going, going the other way. Very close. I, I agree it, with that I call. thought it was a good foul. Yeah. If you're not going to have the, the, the checkered line under the basket, then that's an offensive foul. Because the defender was in pretty deep. I thought a technical could have been fouled because he went down and he smoked the uh, pad underneath the basket. You're not supposed to do that. Yeah. Reinhardt outside the arc on the, arc on the right side. Has a man on him, now gives up his dribble. Has the ball stolen away. Stolen away by Johnson in transition, taking it up. Shot rejected. As Doug, 
Dunster tried to go up with it. Shot was rejected. Great defense by Princeton. Here's Thompson on the baseline. He answers finally. His first jump shot. His first basket of the night. He's got 11. He had nine free throws prior to that. And the lead back out to 24 for Princeton. Princeton with nine turnovers, four in this half. Now, oh, nice little roll by Pierce as he gets it to go. He has nine. 48-26, Princeton. Reinhardt outside the arc, now on, uh, over on the left side. Gives it straight away to Court Lawson. We're down to a minute 45 for the third. Lawson beats his man. Floater in the lane from 10 is good. He's got 12 points. They never came and got him. This no. time he just split the defenders. Went right down the middle of the paint. Having one of his better offensive games. Not normally a scorer. Here's Pierce back the other way. Nearly threw it away. Picking it up. Three ball in the air. Is buried by Owen Dunson. He has 14 to lead his team. 50 to 29. The Princeton lead down to 21. Reinhardt wide open for three, leaves it a little long. Rebound fought for. Thompson batted it off of the Stillman player. That was Johnson over there. And it's out of bounds. It goes back to Princeton Phillips in, replacing Port Lawson for the last minute, three seconds here in the third quarter. Also off the bench, Drake Stewart, a 6'1 senior for Stillman Valley. So this game, I think, Pat, showing that anything could still happen. I mean, it would take a miracle for yeah. Stillman Valley to come back, but still, Princeton has not responded well here in the third quarter at all. They got four turnovers this quarter, and that, they have not really looked to score. I mean, they've scored six points, but they're playing this yeah. catch across court here. Well, now they want to spread it and work for the last shot if they can. We're down to 38 seconds to go here in the third. Here's Reinhardt. Gives it back outside to Phillips as he as the two of them play catch. And Reinhardt nearly lost it right there. We're down to 25 for the quarter. Here's Reinhardt. Looks like uh, baseball started early. They're doing yeah. a little catch here. Play a little long toss. <laughs> We're down to 13. Reinhardt loses it for a moment. Picked back up by Thompson. We're down to nine. Look to the outside. Phillips open. He passes up the shot. Now back to Thompson. Shot on the air for three. Rimming short. Put back up and in by Davis. Count the hoop. That one in right at the horn. Yep. Tegan Davis has eight. The Princeton lead back out to 23. After three, Princeton 52. And Stillman Valley 29. We're back after this. Stillman Valley with the basketball to start the final period. A quick scoreboard update, Pat. Yeah, we get in the third. It's Serena, 41, Putnam County, 30. Back the other way. Thompson with the steal. Before he could get to the into the act of shooting, he was fouled on the floor. Stewart picked up the foul. His That's third. his third. But only the second here in the second half against Stillman Valley. Off the inbound play. Three ball, no good by... Thompson and, and Reinhardt tried to get the ball. 
He's called for the personal foul. His first. Back to, back to the scoreboard update, Pat. We got the end of third, it's Midland 40, St. Bede 34, end of three, Sterling 56, Ottawa 46. Scoreboard update brought to us by SITK, Kitchen and Bath. Here's Stewart with it, straight away. Now, looks to get it to Dunseth and does. Swing it to the top of the circle. To Broski. Broski looks inside. Ron has his man on his back. Takes it up and muscles it in. Big play by Ron. He's got just four, though, in the ball game. He had 20 last night against Kiwani. Yeah, he's struggling. And the ball nearly thrown away right there as Reinhardt didn't see the pass coming. Here's Laporte who's back into the ball game to Reinhardt. Thought about pulling the trigger on the three, didn't do so. Laporte's wide open in the middle. Yep, there, there you he go. There he is, nice. spin move in the paint, finger rolls it down. Noah Laporte has 11. They did a much better job starting him out higher yeah. than had him slide down. Princeton now with three players in double figures, 54-31. Back the other way, shot high off the window, is banked in. That Broski. time, that, that's Broski. He has six. 54-33, shot blocked, still loose on the floor, and picked up. I think we're gonna have a foul called. As Davis came up with the ball, and they just almost tackled him. Jump they ball. called that a hell ball. Yep. That's incredible. Davis was standing there with the ball in his hands, and then they blew the whistle. Wow. It's like, blow the whistle, and guess what the call's gonna be? Monroe back in. Replacing Reinhardt for Princeton. One quick scoreboard update. This will be feeding into the sectional for Princeton. Rock Ridge 27, Sherrard 16 at the end of the third. Princeton gets the ball on the alternating possession arrow and immediately Thompson is fouled. He did, that kid had his arm. Uh, Dunseth, I mean. Dunseth nope, it was, no, they did not. They, they called it instead on Raman. That's his fourth. It's worth shot. In, in very limited playing time. He'll go to the bench. Brett Pierce, who started in this game, is back in. Well, only the third team foul against Stillman Valley. Princeton with five team fouls here in the second half. And there's Laporte as he splits the defenders and goes in for the slam. I think he got away with a travel, I think too. so, too. He had a little jump there, but... He has, done. he has 13, one of three Princeton players in doubles. 56-33 Princeton. To the outside, Dunseth shot for three, very long. Rebound, tipped around, finally picked up by Court Lawson. He was hit from behind. Ball picked up by Thompson. Lobbed to Monroe as the ball knocked away from him. Ball loose on the floor again. And I don't know what the call is. Well, okay, what time happened time is Princeton. Monroe came up with the ball after the, it was blocked and loose right. on the floor. He got it and then just called a quick timeout. So it's uh, three timeouts for uh, Princeton and four for Stillman Valley. We're going to take a quick timeout period here as well. 56-33 the score. Princeton the lead here in the fourth and final period. One of these teams goes home. The other goes to on to the sectional at Orion. And we're back after this timeout. It's been like a, a, a bad game of bowling out here the last couple times down. About as many players on the floor as there are standing up. It's been a very physical game. It has been. Here's Laporte. Gets it to Lawson who just reloads the offense. Down to 540 to go. 23 point Princeton lead. Look to Davis, back to Monroe. 
Here and we they go back to the. This is a four corner offense now. Yeah. Backdoor cut by Lawson. Looks down low, putting it up and in. That's Keegan Davis. He's had 10 points on the night. The fourth Princeton player in doubles. When you penetrate and move on the triangle of two, good things are going to happen. The only starter not in double figures is Monroe right now for Princeton. They're being led by Laporte with 13, 12 for uh, Lawson, and 11 by Thompson, 10 by Tegan, uh, by Tegan Davis. And a loose ball foul is going to go against Philip Broski. It's his third. Team four. Thompson will trigger for Princeton near the scorer's table. Gets it in the back course to Kurt Lawson to Monroe. Again, Princeton, they will go back door. That's what they're kind of looking for. Right. Trying, trying to take layups right now if they can. Like I said, I still like to set a screen for Thompson, get him or Davis open. Yep. You know, or dribble towards Or, or Laporte. Right, but they're, they got two people on Laporte right now shutting that elbow area off. See, when they pass there, the weak side guy normally comes down. Yep. Here's Lawson, beats his man, gets it in the middle of the lane for Laporte as he goes up. He's hammered, he'll go to the line to shoot two. I think Laporte, when he gets the ball in that area, he just wants one thing, he's going to duck it every yep. time. He looked like he was going up there. They called that person foul, the personal foul on uh, Raman, and he just fouled out of the game. Five fouls, no points tonight for Raman. Laporte is one for five from the free throw line. Yeah, he's struggled from the 15-foot stripe in this game. Off the bench comes Caleb Johnson. He's played a lot in this ball game for Stillman Valley. 4.28 to go. Princeton with the 25-point lead. They've actually been outscored by four points here in the second half. Free throw by Laporte again is long. He needs to spend the next few days in the gym shooting free throws. He's had a nice game though. He's got 13 he has. points. Second toss is good. Line drive effort. He, get he a little, just heard you say that. Yeah, he needs to get a little bit more air under the ball though. He has 14 now, the lead out to 26. Stillman has done what they can here in the second half to stay in the game, but just haven't been able to dent the scoreboard enough. Now the reverse layup is put in by Pierce. That was a pretty He's nice got 11. There. Second double figure score for Stillman Valley in the game. Princeton right back into that motion offense out front and a reach foul called against Stillman Valley. I believe it's against Owen Dunson. His third. So now Stillman is working themselves into foul difficulty too. That's the six team foul. So the next one puts Princeton at the line. Get it in bounds to Monroe, back to Lawson. Stutter step move, nearly lost it, picked it back up. Loses his man, now goes into the paint. Nearly loses it again. And ball tipped away from Monroe and out of bounds and will go back to the Princeton Tigers. Look to trigger here under their own basket with 3.45 to go. Inbound play here. As Princeton takes it right back outside. And fouled out of three is Thompson in the corner. He's going to go through three free throws. They pulled him up so hard, he went about three feet off the ground. That's on Johnson. That's his second. But that's the seventh team foul. But this will be a three-shot foul coming up here for Grady Thompson. And he's 9 of 10 from the free throw line. Free throw short. He's getting worn out. That was his 11th free throw attempt. He's got 11 points on the night. Let's see, have one or two baskets. One basket. Yeah, that's it. Second toss is good. He's kind of creeping up there. He averages 23 a game. He's only had probably about three shot attempts. Yeah, he. You know? because you don't count an attempt on the ones that you're fouled in the act unless they go in. Second, third, third free throw is no good. And, look, and a held ball, that was a, a really quick whistle on that one. Stillman Valley had the rebound and they have the arrow as well here. I thought they were going to call a foul. I did there. too. 
I did too. So Stillman with the basketball here. Here's Pierce, top of the circle. Three ball in the air. Rimming no good. Rebound Laporte. Bring it ahead to Thompson. On the bust out the other way. Here's Monroe. Takes it in, lays it in. Give the assist to Tegan Davis. He's got six points, Monroe. He wants to be the fifth member of the starting lineup in double figures tonight for Princeton. Here's Pierce. Loses it on the floor. Picked up by Davis. Bullet pass the other way. And knocked out of bounds. We'll go back to Princeton here. But 3.02 to go. Here comes Rosario and Phillips back in, replacing Monroe and Court Lawson. Phillips will trigger on the inbound play for the Tigers. Nope, now they just said to the side Thompson. Thompson they, they're going to probably get the ball right back to Thompson here. Good possibility. Pass here, then they go down screen. Nope, they didn't, they they didn't they reverse it. Down low, here's Monroe. Muscles the shot up, no. Thompson, the weak side board, puts it in. Thompson now with 14. He ties Laporte for team high honors for Princeton so far. 64-35. And now the ball lost out of bounds, but I think it was touched last by Davis for Princeton. I Williams comes back in. Also Starkey back in for Princeton. Replacing Laporte and Davis. Here's the inbound play for Stillman Valley. Broski on the baseline, shot too long. Starkey, the rebound for Princeton. Gets it to Thompson, who's not in any hurry right now. Although wide open is Phillips for three, leaves it a little short. And the rebound goes off the hands of Rosario and back to Stillman Valley. 2.22 to go. Got one final score. It's Serena advances. They beat Putnam County 49-46. Ends up being a tight one as Putnam County tried to come back at it, but that's a really good Serena team. Now the ball stolen away and then stolen right back by Stillman Valley taking it inside and laying it up and in. That was uh, Pierce who now has 13. Now it's straight man to man. And a reach foul out front called against Johnson. It's his third. And Thompson will go back to the free throw line to shoot the one and one on the 18th foul against the Cardinals. Lucas Meyer for the first time in for Stillman Valley. Looks like Stillman starting to run up the white flag. Princeton already has three of their starters out. Thompson's free throw is good. That's 15 now. 11 for 14 from the free throw line. One more coming here. Free throw is good. Thompson will come out now. He's replaced by Carter Patterson, the senior. 16 for Thompson. His evening's work is done now with, as we're under two minutes to go and a 29 point lead. This is exactly the score difference at halftime. Back the other way, shot from the outside, rimming no good for three and rebound taken down by Williams. In transition, here's Phillips. Takes it in, can't get it to go. Williams swats at it, goes off his hands and out of bounds. Back to Stillman Valley. For Princeton, Brady Byers, number 10, is in. Also in landing Poning. So both teams emptying their bench now. Nick Giddings, number 14, in for Stillman Valley. Sousa will come in for Putnam County. Daniel Sousa, the junior, replacing Replacing Christian Rosario. So not a starter left on the floor for either team now. Nope. Last minute. Every, every, everybody gets a chance to play in the regional yep. championship ball game. Now a wild shot taken that time by Lucas Meyer. And the rebound goes to the Tigers. 
Ahead they bring it to Sousa. Straight away shot on the air for three. Rimming no, and I think you're gonna have a loose ball foul against Daniel Sousa for Princeton. Only a six team foul, so under a minute to go now. Princeton looks like they're gonna have their 30th win of the season while Stillman Valley will end their campaign with a final record of 19 and 12. Princeton, just those two losses on their season. Now way out front, they're gonna have a foul called. It goes against Carter Patterson, his first. This will be a one and one opportunity here for Princeton, Caden Hansen, a junior in. One and one opportunity coming up here. Free throw, no good. Sousa the rebound. That free throw, by the way, was taken by D. Foreman, who's into the Stillman Valley lineup. Ball way up, way back out front. They get it That's to a Patterson. Long a long three, almost went from about 28 feet away. It rolled in and out. That was deep. Now the ball stolen away by the Tigers. Ahead they get it to Patterson, down low to Sousa, picks it up, puts it in. We've got a running clock for the last 10 seconds. 68-37. <laughs> well, Princeton's advancing. That's it. On a long three ball, in and out. Rebound taken down by Patterson, and that'll do it. Final score, Princeton 68. Stillman Valley, 37. 68-37, your final score. We're back. We'll look at the final numbers. We'll also have our player of the game, courtesy of Illinois Valley Credit Union, after we take this time out. Really, Princeton had control of Pat from almost the get-go in this one. They led it, what, 20 to five early, or? 20 to five early, 44-15 at half. You know, they didn't play a great second half, but they, they played good enough to win. I mean, you they know. Did, they didn't have to. Right. I mean, they, they built up a 29-point halftime lead and basically ended up keeping it that way for most of the, 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 the lead never got under 20 at any point in time, so. As far as that's concerned, they did do their job, and now they're on to the sectional at Orion on Tuesday night. It's time now for our Illinois Valley Credit Union player of the game. Illinois Valley Credit Union now offering Visa cards with interest rates as low as 9.9%. If you live, work, or worship in LaSalle Bureau or Putnam County, you can become an IVCU member. See more now at IVCU.com. Pat? You were counting the ballots over there. Who you got for got player Noah of the game? I got Laporte is your most valuable player tonight. I thought early on he went, he played very, very good the first half. I mean, he didn't play great the second half, but he got it done. I mean, he had some great attempts, and but they changed up. Uh, Stillman Valley went double teamed him basically at the elbow area, so he couldn't get the ball. But the first half, every time they got him the ball, he scored. Yep, and uh, was he the leading scorer on the team, or was it Thompson tonight? 
Thompson had 16, he had 14. But he had a, got it early. He got a bunch early in the first quarter and for his effort tonight. The sophomore Noah Laporte is our Illinois Valley Credit Union player of the game. We've got to work in one more break. When we come back, Pat will have the final numbers on this.